I'm very blessed with how my parents have raised me. Um, my dad has always told me to fight for what I believe in, especially I'm half black and half Filipina. Um, so my dad's black, my mom's Filipina, and she immigrated here. So she's always taught me the value of hard work, and both of them have kind of instilled in me that I can do whatever I want to do. I can speak up for whatever I want to speak up in. And I kind of have the fire that my mom kind of gave into me too. And I know I've always had it in me, but really after the George Floyd incident happens, that was like really a moment where I was like, I need to speak up. And I always knew like I could speak up, but I wasn't like the most outgoing. Like I was still outgoing, but it wasn't really in like social justice just yet. This is like not just something that happened now, this has been happening for centuries. Like my grandpa, he was arrested in his classroom unjustly when he was seven years old. Right? My dad got stopped by the same police officer probably like 10 times right, when he was going through college because his pickup truck was like a suspect vehicle or something like that. I've been racially profiled in my local Target because somebody thought I was stealing like tissue paper or tissue boxes for my sisters because they were sick. Like it keeps happening over and over and over again. Good morning everyone, good afternoon or good evening. Depends on what time you're watching this video. I'm Naya Harrison. 17 years old and I am mad. I just start sharing how I feel because, you know, I was like, I didn't really have a place where I could really let it all out. I obviously have my parents, but it's like, they're kind of going through it too. So I was like, this was like a healthy way for me to kind of share it. And I felt like I would be helping people understand from a different perspective. And so I just sat there, I just started sharing how I felt about the whole situation, um, sharing like family experiences, sharing that this isn't like, this isn't like a new thing. Like the reason why it only feels like a new thing is because now we have phones and now we have social media to share everything. <sighs> I'm getting heated, I need to chill out a little bit. But uh, all that being said, it's just to make everyone aware. Like that kind of started me like speaking out. Um, and then from there, I started becoming vice president of my black student union. Um, I started an equity task force for my school's district. I worked with my principal on actually creating lessons to go beyond what we usually learn about, about black history. Like we usually just learn about Martin Luther King. We learn about Rosa Parks. And we learned that Barack Obama was the first black president in the United States and we kind of just like ended at that. I was like, no, 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 let's look at everything. I was very lucky to be able to meet people like Kyla Bryant, who just graduated from Stanford Gymnastics, and also Jenna Brown, who just transferred to Notre Dame, and she had a great career here at Stanford. And just meeting them and getting to know them, they really thought that I would be a good fit to kind of take on um, Cardinal Black and be able to expand it upon what they've already done. Now it's just up to me to mobilize more student athletes and start events. I know a lot of black student athletes on this campus have been really like looking for a consistent space that we can all be in, so to be able to like, spearhead that and keep it going it's like really cool oh my god dad i got invited to go to alabama i've never been to the south before ever and being from san diego i was like oh gosh like what's this gonna be like um but it was honestly an amazing experience we went into Selma and we went on the Edmund Pettus Bridge um, where Bloody Sunday happened and just to go in person and actually like be on the bridge and we stood on the exact spot where like the attack happened and we all just like took a knee and took a moment of silence and it was one of the most powerful experiences of my life, um, especially just like feeling like you're a part of history and like, going through the whole experience and really realizing that racism and systemic racism have like trickled into everything for the past like I don't even know how long and you don't realize it all the time until it's like really pointed out for you You really have to sit down and take it in are you going to Alabama I feel like that's just one step right and now it's about sharing what I've learned from Alabama with other people still connecting with some of the other players from the Pac-12 which I've done since then which has been super nice and just like honestly like I think the power of voice is really important so I just think as long as I keep sharing what I learn and sharing my experiences I think that's the main way I can grow as a leader Knowing that people are becoming more open-minded, um, I know it's going to take time at least, um, but I'm hopeful that there's going to be positive change in the end. And obviously it's going to be hard to like reach the finish line um, all the time, but I know we're getting like slowly and slowly closer and closer to that finish line. So in general I am really hopeful and I'm just really glad to have like a lot of valuable conversations with people around me as well that kind of like foster that feeling of hope.